Hello everyone, this is Paul here with MemberPress. Uh, today we're going to go over custom fields here in MemberPress. So if you go to your options, click on this fields tab, and you'll be presented with these options here. Uh, we're going to come back to this first one, uh, but for now we'll start with uh, these extended user information fields. Uh, these are built-in MemberPress fields. So for example, name fields, you can click this to show this during the sign up and the user will have an option to fill in their first and last name. Uh, you can require it so that they are not allowed to sign up if they do not fill in that information. And we have address fields, which is just kind of your standard uh, address fields you can show and require those as well. And just a quick note here about these two built-in fields. Um, let's say you wanted to use your own address fields down here or your own first and last name fields down here in this custom area uh, you can do that the problem is uh, these built-in fields uh, have some extra um, connections that these custom fields down here would not have so for example name fields uh, if a user fills in their first and last name when signing up then it will show their first and last name properly here uh, in your WordPress user section. Um, if you just use your own custom first and last name options down here, uh, these will not be mapped to the user's account correctly uh, simply because we're not set up to do that. So these name fields, if you want to collect first and last name, I'd highly recommend you use these built-in fields. And similar, similarly with the address fields, um, if you're passing uh, say you're showing and requiring an address and you want that address to be sent along to say authorize.net for their uh, AVS um, automatic or excuse me address validation service uh, you do need to build, use these built in address fields if you created your own custom address fields down here that information would not be sent along to authorize.net so again uh, some special cases with these built in fields uh, where we've got some more internal handling for those and uh, so uh, just whatever your needs are, uh, if you have some special reason you need to do them down here, then just be aware that you may run into issues where that information isn't being passed along like you thought it might be. Okay, so now on to these custom fields. There are various types that you can create here. Uh, text, email, URL, and date. These are all pretty straightforward. I'm not going to spend the time to go over these in this email uh, text area as well. Uh, essentially these are just text boxes the user can enter some kind of information in. The ones I want to go over are checkbox, drop down, multi-select, radio buttons, and checkboxes. So I'm going to pause the video here for just a second. I will create a handful of these other types really quick um, just so you can see how they work um, but I won't go into too much detail about them and then uh, when I unpause the video we'll pick up here on checkbox and we'll go down the rest of the list. Okay, I've gone ahead and entered in some uh, default, um, you know, some sample fields for those ones we're uh, not really going to cover too much in this email, however, or in this video, but I do want you to just be aware of what's here and watch for it when we get to the, the sign up form. Okay, so we're going to start here with checkbox. Um, this is uh, just a checkbox like this, one of these here. Um, you might want to require a user to um, acknowledge that um, they're an adult maybe so I am 18 plus years old checkbox we want to force them to check this box and I do want to show it and I do want to require it. otherwise this person is not going to sign up um, an interesting thing here, if you actually want this to be checked by default, you can actually type checked in the default value here. And this checkbox will be checked uh, when the user is uh, first signing up. This, this will be checked by default. Um, I do, in this particular case, I want the user to actually manually have to check this box. I'm not going to put that in there but just be aware that that is a, an option available to you. Okay, uh, checkbox, dropdown. Uh, dropdowns are similar to this right here where you can just see a list of options 
and choose one. Uh, so let's say, uh, let's call this uh, annual income. And I do want to show this at sign up. And we'll come back to that required here in just a second. Actually, let's cover it right now. If you want to require a drop down, see the problem with drop downs is you've got all these options, and by default, the top one is going to already be selected. And so the issue you run into is that something's already selected, so you're not, the user isn't forced, even if you've required it, the user is not forced to choose something else in this list. So uh, we've provided a way to do that, and what you'll do is create your first option here, and you'll just enter a bunch of hyphens. You can put in as many as you want. I'm going to put in that many. And you want to leave this option value blank. And then, let's say uh, 0 to 10,000, and 10,000 to 50,000, and 50,000 to 100,000, and then maybe uh, over 100,000. And I'm going to leave all these option values blank because uh, Member Press will actually fill these in for you. Um, Member Press will fill in these values for you. Uh, we do check for all these dashes and we'll leave this blank and I'll show you why for that required thing here in a minute. So uh, that's how you set up a drop down. The next type here is a multi select. And uh, these are similar to drop downs except uh, instead of clicking to see all the options, they're already visible. And the user can actually hold their control key and select multiple options. So um, let's maybe say pets you've owned. And I'm going to show this. I'm not going to require it. But let's say dog, oops, dog, cat, pig. Again, I'm going to leave these blank because MemberPress will fill that in for me. And the next type is a radio button. And radio buttons are similar to drop downs uh, in that the user can only select one option from the list. Um, it's just a visually a different way to um, display it. So radio buttons, what's something a user could pick one of? Um, let me think here for a second. Maybe uh, their favorite color. So let's do red, blue, purple. And the last type here is a check boxes. And check boxes again are similar to a multi select where you can select multiple options. Um, again, it's just a different way to uh, visually output that information. I actually prefer check boxes over a multi select simply because a lot of users don't know that they can click and hold control to select multiple options. So, uh, personally, if you can get away with it, I would choose the uh, check boxes. Uh, over the multi select. So, um, card, card types you've owned. How about that? And we will show this at sign up. And let's say SUV, truck, sedan, uh, crossover. Uh, van. That'll probably be good for now. Alright, we have covered all of the different types. I'm going to go ahead and update the options here. And we'll go see what the sign-up form looks like now. So I'm going to go ahead and view this bronze sign-up form in a new window. And let's see what fields we've got. So we do have our first and last name. We do have our address fields that are all required. Um, but here's our custom field. So phone number, which we did not require. Uh, here's an additional email. And the nice thing about this is the user, if they don't put anything in here, no foul. If they do enter something, it must be a valid email. So I can do just that. Oops, now there's an error. Mm, this email I entered isn't valid. So now I can enter a valid one. And hey, no more errors. 
uh, website URL. Again, if I just type in something that's not a valid URL, it's going to give me an error. So I'm going to add a valid URL in here, and I don't get an error. But since it's not required, I actually can leave it blank also. Birthday, we will get this uh, drop down, and uh, we're actually going to be getting rid of these uh, big ugly options here. So, uh, anyways, for now, the user can select a date and time. It'll be entered in here, and uh, they're ready to go. Uh, we did require this, so we have to fill out something in our text box or our text area. Uh, here's our checkbox that we have to fill this out. It's required, otherwise we get an error. So I got to check this box in order to sign up. This here, look, if I if I uh, choose just these dashes, boom, it's required. I cannot I cannot sign up until I have chosen one of the options. So this is a great way, like I said, to force the user to choose an option rather than it just defaulting to whatever's at the top. So uh, let's go ahead and just pick a random one here. The multi-select, if I hold my control key, I can select and unselect these. Um, again, some users might not know how to do that very well. Um, so it might, if you can, I would highly recommend using these check boxes um, instead of a multi-select. But we'll go ahead and click cat. And uh, here is our radio boxes. You'll see if we choose and then choose something different, it changes the option. We cannot choose multiple here. And that's it. That's all of our custom fields. Um, a couple more things I wanted to quickly go over is um, these default values. So um, for the most part, you enter these default values and it's just going to pre-fill in the fields. So let's say blah here. Um, what I wanted to show you here though was with this checkbox. I'll show you how you can make that checked by default. So we'll type in checked there. But with drop down and with uh, the radio buttons, we can actually have it pre-choose pre something as well. So uh, what we want to do is copy one of these values and we can paste it here in the default value and now 50k to 100k will be our, our default chosen option when the user loads the form and for example in the radio buttons I could say purple right here so let me just save this and we'll refresh the form and we'll see if those uh, default options are going to show up here for us so let's refresh here all right. So now, if we come down here, phone number you see has the blah that we put in there. Uh, the checkbox is checked by default now. 50 to 100k is pre-selected, and purple is pre-selected. So again, that's just a cool way to use uh, these default value boxes here. And now, the last thing I wanted to show you was you can filter these per membership. So let's say for my bronze level, the user's just signing up. I don't want to ask them too much information. I don't want to overwhelm them. So what I'm going to do is uh, whoops, customize these user information fields. And I only want to verify that they're over 18 years old. So I'm going to uncheck everything else for this basic membership level. I'm going to click Update. And now if I refresh the form, you can see our first uh, the built-in fields we didn't disable those so those are still here um, but all of our custom fields are now gone the only thing that's left is this uh, 18 year old checkbox that we filtered uh, on the membership so anyways that is uh, custom fields in member press hopefully this was helpful for you and if you have any questions then please feel free to contact our support and uh, we'll get back with you as soon as we can Thanks, and I hope you have a great day.